Um, my name's Chris, but I write under the pen name Angry American. Um, there will be more books coming out. I'm currently working on book six um, as we speak. Well, it was earlier today as we speak. But um, one change is I, I left my publisher. I'm no longer with Penguin Books because I wanted to. That was my choice. And I will be self-publishing from now on. So, Figured I deserve to make some of the money. <laughs> um, but I'm hoping to have it out in the next month, five weeks or so, hopefully. And, you know, Jan and Bill, they'll know when I have it. It'll be on Amazon. You'll be able to get it on Amazon. It'll be in paperback. It'll be in audio. And it'll be an e-book. Um, I'm still working on the physical distribution as far as bookstores and stuff. That's one of the things that when you're self-published, they like to try to blacklist you and keep you out of the stores. But I'm trying to change that right now. So hopefully it'll be available at the shelves. But that's the news on that one right now. I'm gonna let these other guys introduce themselves too, and then we'll get into some of the other stuff that we've kind of done together here recently. I'm uh, Alan Kay. I'm a Leo. I enjoy <laughs> a good full-body Cabernet Sauvignon with cheese. Now, uh, together I've, I've been doing the weed walks around here, and I'm doing two weed walks tomorrow if anybody's interested. It's, you just went dead. I've never did. It's, uh, it's one of the biggest skill sets you can have is to be able to go out and utilize what's around you. So if you're interested in that, we have two of them tomorrow. I think at 12 and 10 and 12, something like that. It's on the roster. Um, and if you're interested, I notice there's some gray hair in the room as a baseline. And I've done assessments for some people and uh, a lot of the kits are really, really heavy. Uh, one lady who is in the room, I won't call her, um, she had a, a backpack, it looked like something the 10th Mountain Division Light Infantry would carry, and I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at the pack, and I'm thinking, you ain't gonna make it. So I've got some ideas on how you can lighten your pack up, and I'd like to show you some of that. If you're around tomorrow, we can talk about that too. And I was up on the island with these guys doing the out in the woods stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we had fun with that. So I'll be here tomorrow. Speak for yourself. Help you with that. Well, it was fun. <laughs> I'll accept for the, yeah, it was not fun. The hungry, the cold, the wet, yeah. yeah. Aside from that. Hello. Hello. I'm Brett McGee. <laughs> I used to do weed walks too here in uh, the western North Carolina mountains. Um, we would fly around looking for weed. We'd fly out. We'd walk down and roll the people up. And, roll them. <laughs> and they were normally not very happy. <laughs> and you didn't eat this weed. I mean, you guess you could. You make it brownies. I think you could. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, that was a lot of years ago. I um, Actually, I met these guys, believe it or not, in New York. New York City is um, not the place for these kind of guys. Can everybody hear me okay? My wife's back here going. It's not working? Oh, okay. All right, here we go. Learning. All right, so uh, anyway, I met these guys in New York City. And uh, as you can imagine, guys like us don't fit into New York very well. But um, no, I, uh, I spent 20 years in the military, a couple of different services. Um, and then uh, I started working just a couple of years ago in Africa as a contractor for the State Department. And I go over there and do uh, military training for uh, UN troops and soldiers that are fighting uh, in Somalia as well as South Sudan. So um, during that time, I've got to, well, for one thing, I worked in, I was in Iraq in 2005 as well as uh, in combat, as well as working in these countries in Africa. And I've kind of watched a couple places, countries fall, so to speak. Uh, fall into chaos, fall into uh, civil war, and um, I became kind of interested in, in the whole concept of prepping and survival through watching this. And then in my military background, uh, I was in the Coast Guard and yeah. many years ago. Hey, many years ago, like how many years ago? 20, 26 years ago, 25 years ago, I was in the Coast Guard and I was a uh, aviation survival or helicopter rescue swimmer, and that's where I kind of got my whole survival thing started. And um, it's just kind of carried me through. But uh, definitely working in Africa, it's been, uh, I don't work anywhere near hospitals. Uh, not that I'd want to go to an African hospital. Maybe <laughs> there's a couple hospitals in Africa I'd like to go to, but I wouldn't mind going to. But most definitely not the country I work in. Um, it's very primitive. It's a six poorest nation on the planet. And um, the, we work somewhere close to an hour out in the bush. And there's, it's just mud huts. It's everything you see in the National Geographic. It's as primitive as it can be. Uh, I've killed two black mamas in the last year. I hate snakes. And that black mama, you know, is the only snake that's ever killed an elephant. So uh, I'm, 
It's, you know, just everything out there is bred. Everything on that continent is designed to kill human beings. And um, I've learned that carrying the right kind of kit, the right kind of survival kit, particularly first aid equipment, is, is almost vital. So that's kind of where my whole, my whole part of this started. And then while I was there one time, I, got, um, I was uh, approached uh, over the Internet by um, someone from uh, the production company. And uh, they, at first I thought it was some kind of crazy stalker or something weird like that. So uh, I kind of started doing the whole, you know, Facebook and LinkedIn and the, uh, you know, the counter surveillance thing, trying to find out who this person was and come to find out they were legitimate. So, um, yeah, I uh, kind of signed on and met these guys in New York and uh, the rest is going to be history. So Literally. No pun intended. So anyway, uh, do you want to open up to questions? Is it open forum? How are we doing this? Yeah, if you guys have any questions about the show, if anybody wants to ask, you know, obviously we're not going to tell you anything, anything at all. But feel free to ask. So, but no, we'll answer some questions for sure. If you guys have anything you want to know about that or anything in general. Just give a quick background of what the show is. Yeah. So, the premise of the show, we've we've all seen shows like Naked and Afraid or Skeered and Afraid, um, or Naked and Skeered, but. Um, you're not going to do that. Do it hell. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'll, he'll do it right now. Um, we've all seen the Dual Survivor, the, these other shows. This, the one that we did is unlike anything that's been done. But what the closest thing done by done that's been done the way we did it was Survivor Man. Um, there were ten of us selected. Ten of us were dropped off in British Columbia in October. And we were allowed to select a small kit of tools, basically, equipment. Um, we were given camera equipment and sent on our merry way into the bush. There was no crew. There was no support there. They didn't come at night and check on us or nothing. You were on your own. We had to film it. Um, we had to survive. And we had to try to film it so that you guys, when you watch it, can see what it was like and what we were doing. And it was not easy. Uh, the filming aspect of it just made it that much harder, trying to actually catch it on film, what you're doing. Um, and, pardon the term, it was a suck fest. I mean, it um, wasn't fun. I don't know about these guys. I didn't have fun. Um, it, but it was rough. But, I mean, if they called me today and said, hey, we want you to go tomorrow, book me a flight, and I'm in. I'd go right back, even though I hated every minute of it. I'd go do it again, though. Um, just a glutton for punishment. So... I don't know how these guys felt about it. Um, you know, the thing that I'm, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to, is it? Hang on. Hang on. Everybody hold your ears. Ear muffs. No. Talk about the yellow. Yeah, we are. I think we have the yellow. All right. Sorry. I think so. Yeah, they're going to see it. So. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. So the first question we get, the most obvious question is, so how did you talk to someone? How did you, what if you got your leg bit off by a bear? What if you got hurt? What if you got really sick? What would you do? Um, we had a couple ways. We had two ways, actually. We had a, uh, a sat phone. And, um, Which didn't work. Who, yeah, who, whoever, who here has experience with sat phones? They are worthless. When you really, really need it, worthless. it really, really ain't going to work. It is gonna, okay, and I'll, I'm going to get into that in a second, the sat phone. But the other thing we had was something called a yellow brick, which is kind of like, like a GPS. But what we could do is we could send basic texts. Uh, I don't mean like texting your wife. I'm talking... Pre-selected, really, it's like really three words or something, five words, um, just to them. And they could also track our movements with that so that we didn't wander off into the wild blue yonder somewhere and never be found again. Um, now, these things, the, the, the yellow brick also worked on the Iridium satellite system. And this is something to think about in your prepping and your, uh, your uh, communications. The, they don't work. Okay, if you live near anything beyond desert, flat desert, they will not work. Um, I was between two mountains, okay? And uh, you could literally, I mean, there was only 100, I don't know, 75 yards between the two mountains. And they're pretty steep. They were short. They were 700, 800 foot tall. But they were, the trees on them were 70 foot tall. It's the craziest thing you've ever seen up there. But anyway, the satellite, you literally, I would get a signal. And the satellite, you can almost imagine your brain is right here on this side of the mountain. And I would have about five to 10 seconds of talking until it got to right here. And then it would go to the other side of the mountain and be gone. So satellite communications are horrid. Horrid. What was bad about that was we were being dropped off. Um, of course, we had no watches, cell phones. We have no electronics other than the stuff that they gave us. 
uh, as we were being dropped off in our various ways, um, there was a kid, a, a, a little boat, um, he was like an assistant boat driver, what don't you call him, the first mate, kind of like Gilligan or something, but he was a Native American, he was from, he was a First Nations people. And this kid is sitting there with his, app, his iPhone, and he's doing it, he's doing it, he's going, he's like, hey, I got a 3G service here. And I'm like, you know, what, you know, if I could just have my cell phone. Yeah, they could have just gave a cell phone. I, have a cell way phone. Better I up promise up. not to call my wife. I promise not to FaceTime my kids. And, you know, I promise. You know, but anyway, they didn't let us have it. They gave us the sat phones, which were completely useless. But uh, anyway, that's the first question we get is how did we communicate? And that's what we did. We had the electronics we had were hoarded. We had a 100-pound Pelican case. I think it's at least 100 pounds. At least. It looked like a coffin for a midget. It was a midget. <laughs> yeah. Little people. I was told. Sorry. sorry. Little people. Yeah. If there's any little uh, people here, yeah. we love you. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, God bless the pig. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was it was uh, full of batteries. It was full of batteries and cameras. Uh, of course, you know, we had two or three different types of cameras, and um, they the batteries were pretty heavy, and we had we had some some charger systems, a way to charge some of the batteries, and of course we had film. The film is little cards, SD little cards. SD cards, yeah. So they were, they were the easiest part of the whole thing. Uh, moisture was a big problem, as you can imagine, oh, that area. Yeah. Is, moisture is... Yeah, if you ever small. go there, wear a hat. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Um, and waterproof Today everything. we expect 26 feet of rain. Yes. That's the easiest job in the world, being the weatherman up there. Oh, yeah, it rained every day. Yeah, yeah you can watch the weatherman Vancouver. He walks out and just goes, it's going to rain. He walks away. Y'all know the deal. Good luck. But the, uh, I will say that the, uh, the, the wildlife and the, the, the edible foods are plentiful. What the hell? It's a joke. It's a joke. That's an inside joke. No. <laughs> plentiful, plentiful, yeah, bountiful resources. resources. That's a Bound running joke. Resources. Us. Bountiful resources. Probably not in the winter. Maybe you watch summer. the show, you'll probably hear those words again. Yes, 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 you will. <laughs> we're mocking someone. You, Go ahead. We got a question over here, Brent. How long Please. were you out there? We can't. Well, yeah, until we left. How long did the show last? <laughs> until the end. season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ten episodes. <laughs> I don't even know how long June around. June 18th. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it starts June 18th at 10 p.m. The name of the show? The name of the show is Alone. What channel? History. History, History channel. channel. And and if you'll watch um, the Today Show, June 18th, you'll catch me and Handsome here on the, the Today Show on June 18th as well. We'll be there. I won't so. be there. I have a democracy to overthrow somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> 